Okay, well, I said good morning, ladies and gentlemen, but that does depend, of course, where you're joining us from. So it's actually good afternoon here where I am. My name is Belen Gallego, and I'm the CEO of ATA Insights. And I'm happy to be here with you today uh, to be able to offer you this um, online session, which is a part of a series of three that is going to cover blockchain and solar coin in uh, quite a lot of detail. Uh, I know that much has been said and much has been written about blockchain. It has going to affect the energy industry. Um, but this is a chance uh, for you to really understand in depth uh, what are the repercussions, the status of the technology and how it all works. Because we have two super, super experts with us here today. Nick, can you please introduce yourself and tell us where you're joining us from? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Nick Gogarty, and I'm joining from about one hour outside of New York City in Connecticut. Excellent. Thank you very much, Nick. Paul, what about you? Who Can you tell us a little bit more about you and where you're joining us from? Yes. Uh, very excited to be on it. Thank you for inviting me. I'm calling in from New York City, an hour south of, uh, of Nick, and my background is really in economics, uh, valuation, and currencies, and, and over the last half a year or so, looking at these newer technologies, Bitcoin and blockchain. Excellent, thank you very much, guys. So today you're going to hear a lot about blockchain, a lot about solar coin, which is uh, you know some of the instruments or technologies, I guess, that Nick will tell you more about this, that they've worked on. Uh, but first I wanna ask you guys a question. We as the speakers, we get a kick of seeing where everyone is joining from. We usually have a lot of countries represented. So please introduce yourself through the chat, you know, to everyone. Just ask, uh, you know, just tell us what's your name and where you're joining from. And in answer to a question from William, um, today the seminar will be about 40 minutes or so. And here how it's going to go. Uh, today we're going to cover an intro to what is blockchain and what is solar coin. And hopefully this should put to rest all of the questions and nags you have had about the technology, because you probably heard a lot about it before, but you're still not sure how it works or what it does. Today, we will solve that. Tomorrow, we're going to go into more detail about how currencies work. Uh, this is where Paul is going to be with us and is going to tell us all about currencies, their life cycles, how they're held up, how their value is held up. Um, and finally, on the third day, which is on the Thursday, we're going to tell you how you can claim your solar coin. So if there is any solar developers or project managers out there, there is solar coin, it's available for you, you can claim it and we will tell you how. So without further ado, Nick, you're going to talk to us about yeah. blockchain and solar coin. So off you go, I leave you guys to it. Okay, very good. Um, I'm just gonna share a uh, PowerPoint here, for just a brief one with everyone. Um, okay, so um, first of all, I'll introduce myself a little bit um, in terms of my background. My name is Nick Gogarty. I have a deep background in um, technology and in finance. I um, uh, have worked for one of the world's largest hedge funds, uh, master's degree um, from a top French engineering school, um, where I focused on quantitative approaches to finance, um, and also have worked for um, a technology institute, a deep future institute that was modeled on the MIT Media Lab. Um, where I was overseeing many years ago, uh, multiple projects, everything from artificial intelligence, um, uh, material sciences, physical sciences, life sciences. So um, with that kind of background, I'm also an Ivy League author uh, published from Columbia University. I'll jump into um, something called um, SolarCoin. And then if you want, we can go into um, a little bit more on, on what blockchain is. And, and so what I'll do is I'll explain um, SolarCoin from, from the basics. So with that, um, what we can think of is most of you are probably familiar with or have heard of Bitcoin, which is a you know, global token. It's, it's tradable um, around the world and worth, depending on the day of the week, uh, somewhere between 150 to $200 billion um, US dollars traded. Um, SolarCoin is using the same technology uh, that Bitcoin uses, or very similar technology, namely what's called the blockchain, um, to maintain uh, tradable tokens. Now, there are some very important differences with SolarCoin um, in terms of how it's distributed and, and some things about it, and so I'll proceed to explain that. SolarCoin is effectively a reward uh, for global solar energy production. It was set up 
uh, by myself, my co-founder about four years ago as a 40 year program to incentivize global solar energy. And the way this is done is that everyone who can verify that they have produced one megawatt hour of solar energy is given one of these tokens. Now, these tokens, similar to Bitcoin, are uh, freely and openly traded on a blockchain, and they can be exchanged for goods and services or even other currency. So they currently trade, um, each one of these is worth maybe between 25 US cents and 30 cents, 25 euro cents, etc. And they're traded on um, exchanges around the world 24 seven. So this is the core of what's going on with SolarCoin. Some differences between SolarCoin and Bitcoin, for those of you who may know a little more about it, are that the SolarCoin blockchain um, is based on extremely low carbon um, technology. Bitcoin will probably consume between three to five or six billion dollars worth of resources this year, a mix of energy and servers, etc. This serves 50 to 60 million people, the estimated population of Bitcoin users um, and traders. If SolarCoin were to scale to the same size, it would use about a quarter of a million dollars worth of energy. So significantly more um, efficient and a lot more friendly from a, uh, a carbon perspective. The project currently distributes SolarCoin in 58 countries. Um, and right now it's a fairly small community, uh, you know, thousands, the community measures in thousands. Um, that being said, the SolarCoin Foundation, which helps run the project um, with its community of, of over 2,000 people, um, is looking to scale significantly this year. Some of you may be aware um, that the uh, large energy producer in the Gulf, Aqua Power, a $25 billion firm, uh, claimed its solar coin um, this year and is starting to engage in the program. We are also in talks with some of the world's largest energy monitoring and production firms uh, globally. So what now is a fairly small program will be scaling uh, significantly. So that's a little about the program. Um, you know, so, um, one of the first questions people ask is how can I get this SolarCoin? Um, someone can uh, submit information to the SolarCoin website. There's a little login um, there. Or uh, they can find one of the affiliates uh, listed on the site who will help them. And that's solarcoin.org. The program, um, true to many of these programs in the blockchain space, is all open uh, source data. So all of the code is open, everything's very transparent, and it's a very open um, community, uh, multiple languages. It's also open for the government and the private sector. Many people ask about the nature of the reward. It is, um, the way we phrase it is, it's very similar to air miles for solar energy. And what I mean by that is, we view most solar energy uh, projects is having three streams that emerge from them. Uh, there's a black stream, which is the cash flows that one gets from selling the electricity. There's the green stream, uh, which is the environmental benefits typically associated with solar energy production. So that could be uh, feed-in tariffs, uh, carbon credits, or other types of environmental attributes associated with the energy that are then monetized. And then we have what we call the yellow stream, which is, or the gold stream, which is uh, the solar coin stream. It's a free option um, on top of uh, the program. So that's a little bit about um, what SolarCoin is um, and how it works. Again, it works on uh, the blockchain technology. Uh, many of you have questions about a blockchain. We'll go into those in a little more detail as you um, wish. I'll just complete kind of with the SolarCoin part of the puzzle right now. Um, but a blockchain we can think of as a database or a data structure. And you know, here's how this whole process works. So um, what we have is, you know, a solar energy panel produces energy. Um, an inverter may read it, or a solar monitoring platform that captures that data. And then what ends up happening is we partner uh, with uh, large O and M or monitoring platform companies to get the raw data in, and we we take very low frequency data, so it's only once every couple of maybe weeks or months that we gather the data. Uh, we verify that it's correct and true. We verify that there's um, a known customer on the other end, and then we distribute the solar coin. And those solar coins can be distributed into a wallet, um, into a wallet software. And the software works on uh, iPhones, iPads, Android, uh, Mac, and Windows machines. 
And then you can do whatever you wish with the coin. It's effectively similar um, to, to having uh, cash. So I, I see we have some French fans there. Uh, for those who are interested, I, I did attend the uh, Ecole des Ponces et Chaussées uh, many years ago. So that's uh, hence, hence the French flag. Um, so that's how this works. Now, the interesting thing about um, SolarCoin and the blockchain is that effectively what a blockchain is, is a very high integrity um, uh, data repository or sometimes referred to as a distributed ledger. And so we record the energy that's been produced from a facility. We record it a bit anonymously onto that blockchain. So the only information that's public is the postcode level geographic data. And it will say um, facility XYZ uh, generated this much energy um, from this period to that period. And this is why a solar coin went into circulation. Um, after that, they're fully tradable. Uh, many people then ask, well, what can I do with a solar coin? What's it worth? You know, what do I do with it? There are um, a, a list of service providers who accept solar coin. Um, Aqua Power, the large uh, energy firm out of the Gulf, actually has its uh, tier two and three suppliers in environmental services actually accepting the solar coin um, at the market rates for services. Um, otherwise, if someone wishes, they could sell uh, the solar coin uh, at, at market rates, or they could hold on to them. Um, you know, as, as they wish. There are also uh, charities which accept the solar coin and even commercial developers. So there's a, uh, a partner site we have in uh, South Africa called The Sun Exchange. Um, they actually do crowdfunding for solar energy and they actually accept solar coin for investments in crowdfunded solar energy projects on top of schools and small commercial facilities. So what this means is if you have a solar monitoring uh, facility, you can verify the production of energy. Um, you will earn a solar coin. You'll get a solar coin, which is given as a grant. Um, and then if you want, you could invest that back into solar energy production in Africa. So it's kind of a, a classic case of the full circular economy. On the website, we have a summary uh, paper, what we call our policy paper, which is under the documentation link on the website. And that explains and is designed for policymakers or large corporates um, how to understand what solar coin is. Um, it's in uh, seven or eight languages. Um, and the idea is that governments can claim their solar coin. And if they wish for the facilities they own, let's say hospitals, administration, buildings, et cetera, if they wish, um, what they can do is they could redistribute those um, for as a free tax incentive to smallholders or rural development. Um, or they could donate them to charity. So we have a few projects, um, primarily in, in Africa, involving uh, small off-grid uh, solar development where they accept them. So that's kind of a summary of what SolarCoin is and how it works. Um, what I'd like to do is open it to questions and answers so that this is as valuable as possible for um, you, the audience. And we can go in and discuss um, the blockchain in detail. We can discuss, um, you know, basically the regulatory treatment of solar coin, its acceptance, uh, price movements, or how to engage or involve uh, with the project. Um, so with that, I think, Belen, I'd like to open it up to um, questions for the audience. You've got a bunch already, actually. Let me start with one here. Okay. Um, if I receive solar coin because I produce some solar energy, who is giving me that solar coin? In other words, who is rewarding me for producing that solar energy? Correct, correct. So um, that solar energy uh, is there. The solar coins are actually issued by the Solar Coin Foundation, which is a what's called a public benefit corporation based out of the United States. Um, and so they, we actually, and the co-founder of it actually distribute the solar coins from a large uh, what's called a pre mine or a large pool of non-circulating solar coin. So what happens is um, the data comes into us, is kept effectively anonymously. We verify that the energy has been produced and then send the solar coin um, to the individual and it enters circulation. And every time a solar coin enters circulation, there's a little message that goes with it, a little bit like the, the memo field in a checkbook um, that says this solar coin went into circulation because of this energy production at this postcode and facility. How or why, actually, here the question is, why should I get by obtain a solar coin? Sure. Um, 
because it's a little bit like, um, to use finance language, a free option. Um, there's no cost and they're worth a little bit of money. Um, and this can become very interesting. Um, to give you an example, uh, this is public data. Um, Aqua Power uh, claims solar coin. They uh, had a facility that they, um, their recent levelized cost of energy production for solar energy was $23. Um, a solar coin at 23 cents is an additional 23 cents. It's 1% on that. Now that doesn't sound like a lot of money. However, if you're financing that facility and um, let's say it's 10% equity financed and the equity holder takes that, that's an additional 10% return on investment, assuming the price holds steady. So basically it's interesting free money um, or if you wish, you could claim it and give it to charity. Depending on your tax regime or your country, uh, that could be tax deductible. And is it possible to mine solar coin? Uh, the process for actually producing and maintaining um, solar coin is actually called minting. And so it doesn't have the same, it's different from mining. Um, mining is very computationally intensive and has all the energy use associated with Bitcoin that's, that we consider fairly a negative. Um, with minting, what you can do is if you have solar coin, um, you can earn a potential 2% rate of return per year by supporting the solar coin network and having your machine kept on. Nick, FYI, everyone loves to ask you questions, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, That's Paul, perfect. Actually, you know, I keep on looking. Every time I look at the box, there is more, so we just go through them. We've got time. Excellent. Perfect. Hi, Nick. Tell us about the donors, founders, or the Solar Coin Foundation, please. Sure. Uh, myself and my co-founder have backgrounds in um, finance, uh, hedge funds, and uh, AML. Um, my co-founder has a background in engineering and complexity science, and I have uh, my first degree is cultural anthropology uh, with a focus on economic sustainable development. Um, as indicated, I'm an author uh, for Columbia University where I wrote a book on macroeconomics um, and innovation. And I occasionally uh, guest lecture in uh, Professor Paul Johnson's class. Um, and Paul is uh, an advisor. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, in one sentence, how would the world look different because of the existence of solar coin? Sure. Um, Right now, very little different. We hope a lot different in the future, obviously. We, we anticipate scaling. The idea is that um, by distributing solar coin and effectively if the value increases, we may have a marginal incentive for the production of more solar energy. So the idea is that um, should solar coins value increase to a even more meaningful point, and it's, it's grown significantly over the last two or three years, should it get to a more meaningful point, it may become an additional or interesting um, incentive. So on top of RECs or carbon or other things and accelerate the energy transition underway. Question here about why just solar for solar coin? I mean, yeah. you know, other than the name, I suppose. Sure. <laughs> well, we started from first principles and then got the name. So it's a, it's a good question. Um, the idea was the following, and tomorrow's um, webcast will explain the thesis behind currency with, with Dr. Johnson, so that'll be quite interesting. Um, but basically what we did is, you know, I understood or came to a theory that currency was a positive economic externality. It was very interesting. I decided to apply that to one of three things, uh, the thinking being that there are only three things that any country or people can't have too much of, uh, education, healthcare, and energy. Very rarely will you hear someone say that, that country has too much energy or that country has too much education or healthcare. Um, out of that, I looked at energy because I had a bit of a background in it and it's very easy to quantify and qualify energy. Then I decided to apply this phenomenon, this currency phenomenon, specifically to solar energy because A, it's renewable, B, because it has a large distributed democratic base, i.e. anyone can have panels on their roof. Um, so uh, it's a very broadly distributed currency and there's a network effect and some dynamics that uh, uh, Paul Johnson will speak about tomorrow. I cannot wait. Seriously, Paul. Uh, why did you limit it to 40 years? I think this is a currency thing, but... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the limit to 40 years was kind of uh, the following. One, we wanted a goal that was um, large and ambitious and we recognized the project and the program is bigger than any one individual um, and perhaps, you know, for the sake almost bigger than you know, a specific generation. The other thing is when we look at the 
context of, let's say, climate change, um, if we haven't done something meaningful in 40 years, we may not have to worry about it as, as much. So 40 years was chosen as a big enough goal, um, but not unachievable or unattainable. Next question, um, and this I don't really understand whether the question is correct, but on which blockchain is it based, Bitcoin or Ethereum? Yeah, uh, actually this is a fork of um, something called Litecoin. And so it's a very basic, sometimes it's referred to as a dumb chain in the fact that it um, is similar to Bitcoin. The few differences are it uses a proof of stake um, mining algorithm and uh, there we go. I'll start my video. Uh, for yeah. some reason, my video died. Um, Don't worry about it. Can you just okay. off actually your slide so oh, that okay. I can see you more clearly, please? Okay. Um, oh, okay. Got it. And um, so, yeah, that's it. It's just a, a fork of uh, Bitcoin, but with a low energy algorithm. What level of bioselectivity are you seeing an evolution of that since the inception of solar coin. So in other words, how is it working, the networking effect? Oh, the networking effect has been surprising in that the uh, price value um, theory, the network theory of money, which Paul will explain tomorrow, um, has been upheld. The other thing that's interesting is we had assumed that for this effect to work, the, the monetary effect to work, you know, maybe you needed 50, 100,000 plus people. Um, interestingly, a very small community can get that effect to kick in. So that was a very um, uh, positive surprise. If I am an integrator who makes the energy available to utility, am I not, uh, I am not the owner of these kilowatt hours. Can I still be rewarded? The, the, the question of ownership is a funny yeah, one. Yeah, and it's, it's not the ownership of the hours. So a lot of people kind of confuse that with like a PPA. It's actually the owner of the facility. So whoever owns the facility claims, with the exception being that under 20 kilowatts, it's the residence of a home or a household. Uh, is double spending allowed on the one megawatt of energy produced or is it separate of the energy that is sold for electricity purposes? Yeah, it's separate from the electricity it's sold for energy purposes. So our, our let's say, preventing double spending and double counting is once we have um, verified a facility has generated energy, we reward to the facility for that energy. Um, but what someone wants to do with the energy, how they sell it, that's all up to them. This is a very, it's a separate and independent layer. Um, it's also not a proxy for a guarantee of origin or a rec or other things. It's independent. Thank you, Nick. Nick, can you take your screen off your, your slide so that we can see you in a bigger screen? Did you know, just go to oh, the okay. top. Stop sharing. Sure. Yes. There we go. Okay, now yeah. we can see him a lot better, right? Okay. Much better. Okay. In the total supply of solar coins, uh, li is the total supply of solar coins limited or the supply predetermined at all, like Bitcoin, or is it really Correct. directly proportional of all solar energy produced by plants registered? Correct. Um, it is uh, highly variable, and I guess we'd say this, it's capped um, at the, it's roughly capped, one can imagine, at the 98 billion over the 40 years. Um, that being said, uh, we currently have a circulating base of roughly 40 million solar coin, which is view viewable in the blockchain explorer, so you can see all the solar coin in circulation. Every um, month, roughly, uh, new claimants for the solar coin come on board, and so, the circulation um, increases. So there's an, an effective inflationary effect relative to the number of claimants who are coming on board. And how is the market rate for solar coin determined? Um, purely by supply and demand, all third parties. It's an open system. So the same way that Bitcoin uh, with people, different people buying and selling. And so there are multiple exchanges globally um, where the solar coin is sold. Still a very small currency um, relative to some of the other alternative currencies, but we think that will um, change in an interesting way uh, this year. So one of the other questions here is, if there is no cost to solar coin, why is it worth anything? <laughs> well, I will reply to that, but that's a, that's a great monetary theory question for Paul tomorrow. Um, there's effectively no cost to produce a 20 euro note other than the paper, um, it's roughly 20 cents. Um, that's one of the interesting things about currency uh, there's literally no cost to produce a currency, and yet it holds value. Um, and that mystery, I won't give away the mystery that Paul's got, but you'll have to tune in and come back tomorrow for all the answers to that. I've seen a preview of the presentation, and I'm really looking forward to it. You guys yep. getting top-notch experts here. <laughs> what are the markets where it can be exchanged? 
Sure. Uh, there are a, a handful, a small set of uh, exchanges um, online. Uh, those you can find if you go to coinmarketcap.com. Um, they list the exchanges. Uh, one of them is called Lika, which is a, a registered, it's a Swiss exchange that has full uh, KYC, et cetera. One is called Bittrex. There's one called Livecoin, et cetera. So Stefan, he asks, uh, how is the market demand for solar coins being developed? What would, uh, so who would want the solar coins? So what are yeah. we doing to make this a market? It, it's, it's emerging. Um, and it's a very, um, it's an interesting phenomenon because you're literally watching the birth of a currency. Um, and so, you know, for those who are interested in very early things and seeing what's happening, it's very exciting. Um, so we have people who are, um, there's a list of service providers for people who accept them. Um, and it ranges from uh, solar energy installers and trainers to last week, um, a guy said that he will teach people how to play guitar uh, for solar coin. So it's a randomly emerging economy, which is a very fascinating thing to watch unfold. I suppose like if you're a fan of, sol of solar and you want to incentivize it, then you also want to be part of that market and start teaching guitar lessons. Yeah, potentially, yes, exactly right. And, and it's a, a bit like people who accept Bitcoin. Um, they're doing it for one of two reasons. They may do it because they want to speculate and accumulate the coins in exchange for goods, or um, they're interested in signaling and being part of that community. Yeah, you know, so we're creating you know, currencies based in communities and in beliefs rather than in like borders, so to speak. Exactly, like, exactly. Right. So we have some here, William, that is asking a question that I think maybe he's misunderstood. He says, how is solar coin in real value in the U.S. compared to selling surplus solar power back to my local utility company? Um, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're totally independent, totally independent things. So whatever you do with your solar energy, remember I, I mentioned the three independent streams that emerge from a, a solar facility. There's the black stream, the green stream, and the, the yellow stream. So you can sell your power. Um, for the black stream, right, via PPA or directly back into the grid, you may or may not get the green stream in terms of renewable energy credits or let's say carbon if there's additionality. And then the orange stream is just an additional thing. So they're all independent. And so a further question here from Richard says, can the owner of a solar facility sell his um, RECs, which are uh, a renewable energy certificates, mm -hmm. to one party while simultaneously receiving solar coin from the network as well? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're separate entities, yeah. Is SolarCoin already available in any public exchange? Um, I guess it depends what you call a public exchange. You know, there's, there's a regulated, so you have exchanges that are either um, regulated or uh, registered uh, with their facility. So LICA would be a case in point. Um, otherwise, the exchanges one could consider as public, all of them, um, because they're open. Someone here is calling you weird, Nick. I wonder whether that's the first. It says, why the solar coin give away free money? It's very weird. <laughs> so what do you have to say about that? Um, it's kind of the operating bottle. And, and I say to that, come back and listen to Dr. Paul tomorrow. It's a fascinating lesson in terms of how economics work and how money works. Because it, uh, money is a fascinating thing. Uh, we all use it, and yet nobody really understands how it works. Um, and when I say nobody, most economists, most others don't, um, we have a very interesting theory behind that. And so far, it's, it's, we've tested it against 100 existing currencies and gold and Bitcoin, and, and it seems to be holding up. So it's an interesting monetary experiment, and it's free for someone to participate if you produce solar energy. Can an owner of a pre-existing solar asset receive solar coin, or do solar coins only accrue for new projects installed? Right. Great question. Um, solar coin are granted uh, retroactive to January uh, 2010. So if you could prove that you were the owner of a facility uh, for a period of time, uh, you could claim retroactive to that. So if you owned the facility, let's say from uh, January 2010 to 2015, and it produced X amount of energy and you could prove that, um, we would grant you the coins. And right now they're granted on what's called an estimated basis. So we could just use the nameplate capacity of the facility and the interconnect documents. There's a Juan Sanchez here, or you Sanchez says, if I produce one kilowatt hour and get some solar coin for it, it's actually one megawatt hour. Correct. Uh, but yeah, not one kilowatt, but one megawatt. Do I still own that energy? Yes. That's an easy what's one, the, yes. 
Yeah, most of the questions are, if we're a solar retail, can we claim for the panels we sell to customers? Uh, no, because it's the owner of the panel um, who effectively is considered the producer. How are you funding the projects or, or you know, the solar coin project? Right. Uh, it's been funded. Um, the original funding uh, was from my own and my co-founders' uh, pockets. Aren't you generous, actually, Nick? Good for you for improving humanity. <laughs> no, you'll, you'll ask, you can ask Paul about that tomorrow. When you understand how the economics work, it's something where we're producing something interesting that should be very positive for people. And in the long run, we think it will work out um, for everyone very well. Are you not looking at creating an ecosystem at, which will grow in value, giving massive, massive adoption of solar coin, thus driving value up and ability to cash in by early adopters? Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, you, can, you can also give to charity, I suppose. But exactly. The point right. is, if you start exchanging it, you don't need U.S. dollars. So yes. you go beyond borders, and you can imagine that if you're just getting money for producing energy, producing energy, whatever it is, and if that value was high, it didn't matter what the government realities or the government uh, help, if you like, is in Correct. state. It Correct. already can finance itself. Right? Co correct. Right. Exactly. So you're getting just an additional, um, an additional benefit for producing right. energy. But with the, with the price being like high enough, it could almost self-sustain more production of energy. Co correct. There's a very interesting concept our community came up with called the Solarity. And the Solarity is a price point. And there's something called the Solarity Tracker. It's a website. And the Solarity is the price point at which the solar coin actually pays for the energy fully and effectively the energy is free. So, for example, um, with Aqua Powers, one of the lowest producers in the world, they produce energy now in, in, in Saudi at $23 um, dollars per megawatt hour. They will in 2021 or in 2020. Oh, okay, correct. But, <laughs> right, the yeah. facility is, yeah, still have to build it. Um, right. <laughs> thank you, Bella. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, if SolarCoin was at $23 at that time, effectively the energy would be um, free. Okay, so you guys, what, what you're looking at here is instead of following US dollars or euros or the rand or whatever right. you're based, is really like, can we create a solar currency, if you like, that could actually help each other up a little bit so that we can scale faster? I think this is what I'm understanding. Yeah, you have an energy-based um, economy and those who are interested in, um, let's say, facilitating or enabling that energy-based economy um, could accept SolarCoin. So Jonathan, who's a friend of mine, uh, hi Jonathan, how are you? <laughs> He's saying free money sounds like a wonderful thing and we all wish it was invented a long time ago, but seriously, who is giving me the money? Right, right. <laughs> okay. Um, boy, Paul's got a lot of work to do tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll be fascinated by Paul's um, answer. You know, I will qualify this. Um, money and currency is highly counterintuitive um, it doesn't make sense. It's one of those things where we experience it every day. So we think it should make sense. I give over a euro. I get some ice cream. Okay. Um, it doesn't make sense. And I'll explain this in the following way. I started trading um, Japanese yen futures at the age of 17. Um, I wrote my master's thesis uh, at the age of 25 on quantitative approaches to hedge funds at one of the top engineering schools in France and finance. I worked with the largest hedge fund specializing in macroeconomics. I did not understand um, and have a theory for money or currency until three or four years ago. Um, and so Paul will share that theory and how we worked on it together. Paul, um, you know, Paul. I've heard way too many times, Paul will tomorrow, Paul will tomorrow. Just give us a little preview today so that sure. we can understand it. The, the net net is that um, currency is a really interesting phenomena and in that it's an emergent property of people trying to solve a trading problem and a coordination problem. And no currency in the world right now, this will make sound a little bit strange, but none of the world's major currencies have a value underneath them. Um, and that's probably very shocking for a lot of people, but if you go to the Bank of England and you take a 20 pound note to the Bank of England, they will give you two tens. There's nothing in return. There's no gold, there's nothing in return. The same with the Euro European Central Bank. You go to European Central Bank, you'll get change. There's nothing under there. Um, that's both illuminating and disturbing. Um, and so what you see is currency works as a social phenomena, an emergent social phenomena, 
And we're using that understanding for SolarCoin. And we leave it there. Paul, do you want to add anything? <laughs> well, I'll just add to Nick um, that the currency, money, but currency is really uh, a function of the community. And so what Nick is doing with SolarCoin is creating a currency for that community. Um, and the people that produce solar, the people that are want to support solar, and anybody wants to support that community, most likely will be highly interested in solar coin over, over time because that currency represents solar production. Um, and it's a distributed, fairly democratic uh, uh, resource. So there's a lot of reasons why a, a community around solar coin will emerge. We've seen one emerge already. And it's highly likely that a bigger one will emerge as the SolarCoin network expands. And we'll talk a little bit of t uh, tomorrow about how that happens. Um, but history as a guide would suggest that as this grows, the, the network will grow, the acceptance of SolarCoin will grow, and the value of SolarCoin will grow. Excellent. Thank you very much. A, a few final questions. We'll have maybe five more minutes. And um, sure. can you expand a little bit of the minting? or share a reference? Sure, sure. So the minting process is the mechanism by which we uh, maintain the blockchain and maintain the state of where all the tokens are. And for someone to participate in the minting process, um, they go and they download the software from the SolarCoin website. Um, they have, if they have um, uh, SolarCoin in that uh, wallet, in that wallet software, um, by just leaving that open, they effectively are maintaining a copy of the full blockchain, which is the record of all of the transactions, and they get 2%, um, a targeted 2% rate of return on the solar coin they have in the wallet. Does that help? Yes, I'm actually going through the questions quickly to see which ones are more. So sure. this one is a difficult one for you. But here we is, Paul. What is the prediction of the value? Uh, sorry, Nick. Uh, Where's the oh. prediction of the value of solar coin short and long term? Sure. Um, first, I'll give this caveat. We are fairly um, conservative in our treatment of two things um, at, at Solar Coin Foundation. One is um, customer data, and the other is um, how we treat uh, the solar coin as almost a financial instrument. So we treat it almost as if it's a public security. We treat it as regulated, even though it's it's currently not in most countries. Um, so we don't give away uh, public, what's called uh, material, um, non-public information. That being said, we think that the value of SolarCoin um, in long term will grow as we grow the network. Um, most likely, if the theory uh, that we have, which is held true so far, is held up, uh, we think the price will become interesting in the future. But we don't really talk about um, price that much. We don't want to um, appeal to speculators. We're much more interested in growing a stable community of uh, solar energy producers. This is very different from a lot of the blockchain ICO hype. Um, we have a 40 year plan. Um, and so we tend to think long term and we, we like people who are interested in, in long term thinking as well. Richard here asks, is there any cost to me as the owner of a facility to start tracking my production to enable the receipt to solar coin? Uh, there's, well, I'll qualify it like this. There should be no cost to um, apply and receive SolarCoin. If a monitoring company, if you sign up with a monitoring company, they may charge you to do that monitoring service, but they should be separate things. And so you should never be charged to receive SolarCoin. And that's actually a very important point because we want to make sure we're never seen to be selling a security. So it has to be granted. It's effectively a charitable grant that's, that's a conditional grant. Do public utility companies in the U.S. trade with SolarCoin? Uh, not right now. There are uh, companies that, that um, are looking at claiming SolarCoin, um, but right now they aren't um, trading. We do have one utility in France called Equateur who actually accepts SolarCoin to pay your bills. So if you actually have SolarCoin, you can pay off your utility bill with it. That would make sense, I suppose, because you're draining your own solar rooftop, solar yeah. roof, and then you... Okay, so can, can you briefly descri describe the process behind validation of the solar energy? How can it be monitored? We're doing this on the day three on Thursday, but, you know, just give us a few. Sure, sure. Um, the process um, is, is primarily twofold. At this point, um, we primarily just look at interconnect documents, and we're granting based on what's called estimated production based on nameplate capacity. 
we are moving towards actual granting, which will involve effectively um, getting data directly from monitoring uh, facilities and platforms. So direct energy production from an inverter um, that we then read and verify um, on a low frequency basis. And what I mean by that is we only need, we verify and we grant SolarCoin at this point every six months. So um, we don't need all of the production data, just you know, once every six months or once every couple of months, we read it from a monitoring partner uh, via an API or a data feed. And how do you treat, how do you protect that data? There is also a question about data protection here. Sure, sure. we're in the process of getting our, um, let's say our compliance with um, and adherence to the GDPR, uh, the European um, uh, protection routes. So one of the things we're looking at doing for GDPR, first of all, we only want as minimal data as possible because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's for us, it's more trouble. Also, we try to um, keep the monitoring company um, to retain the data at the edges. So um, basically it's all secure. We don't resell any data. We don't do anything else um, with it. And to the degree possible, if a person wants us to, uh, or wants to leave the program, we can destroy the um, uh, historical energy data. And we'll probably retain the personal information um, for a few years. We do that because if a financial regulator um, comes to us and asks us, why did you send the equivalent of thousands of euros or dollars or Swiss franc to someone, um, we need to be able to explain why. So this is one of the things is if a regulator or a tax authority shows up, uh, our goal is to try and comply with that request for information within 24 to 72 hours. Um, question here, if it's free money, why don't just have 100 more solar core blockchains and allow all plans to register with them? Um, in theory, that could happen. It would pose a challenge to the value of them, uh, the program. So, you know, in theory, that's a possibility, but I think um, if someone thinks through it, and as Paul will explain tomorrow, it's probably easier and better just to go with SolarCoin. Uh, if the plan has an ESCO model, is the ESCO company, do you understand what an ESCO comp uh, model is? If you could elaborate, that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay, so ESCO is where uh, there is an energy service company that comes Got into your, your industry or whatever, and it gives you the service as if it was a utility. Got it. But they own the system and you just pay money. Every understood, month understood, yeah. And, and ESCO effectively by owning the company the same way an SPV might, um, you know, a special purpose vehicle, effectively could be the claimant. And so they would effectively own the claim on um, the solar coin with the exception of if it's below 20 kilowatts and on top of a residential uh, facility, the claim uh, goes to the residents. And the reason for that um, let's say it's a small home, is because we want to grow the, the network of participants. And is SolarCoin non-for-profit? Uh, SolarCoin is actually, this is an interesting question, is set up in the U.S. as something called a public benefit corporation. And so it's a for-profit corporation. However, it has a mandate in its articles of incorporation, which requires that it supports um, the benefit that's stated in the charter, which is the support and encouragement of solar energy. Okay, so because you know we've promised that we're going to keep it short and it's now 46, I'm gonna do one more question that actually okay. answers two. You guys have been trying to get through the questions, but you're sending more and more, which is great. The thing is, I'm not getting anywhere near getting to the end of this. We have now 35 open questions. Uh, one that is actually two times, some of them are repeated to be fair, but in general, there's still a lot of interest. Um, says, besides Aqua Power, is there any other large utility? And you mentioned the French company. So if you could yes. say that again. Uh, Equateur, it's a smaller French utility and, and they're listed on the site. So it's E-K-W-A-T-E-U-R. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, someone says here, my parents told me money doesn't grow on trees. Where <laughs> were they wrong? So no, they're right. You can look at any tree. There's no money on them. <laughs> Unless you grow oranges. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so I think we're going to leave it there. I'm really sorry, guys. I know there is a lot of questions here. We can't possibly get through them today, unfortunately. I thought we had a lot of time for questions and answers, but there's been a lot of interest. Uh, I think Nick put his details on the, if not, and if you have some further questions, get in touch with us. We still right. have two more um, online series. So tomorrow we're talking more about current systems themselves. I'm sure Paul We'll also be answering some of these questions that you may have on top of that. And then on the third day, we're going to talk about how to claim SolarCoin itself as of today. 
so that they, you will also be able to ask any questions that you have. So it, would you like Paul or Nick to say anything before we say goodbye, we'll say see you tomorrow or add no. anything? Thank you very much, Bellin, for the opportunity to uh, you know, address your audience. And I think everyone will be uh, looking forward to, to Paul's presentation tomorrow. I'll be um, in the background um, and, and Thursday. So great stuff. Excellent. Paul? Yes, we have uh, 45 minutes tomorrow to answer two hours worth of questions. <laughs> Excellent. So and there is more than two hours actually in here, plus the ones that are going to come for you. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. And we will catch up and we'll get more in depth into this topic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. No, no,